The Crayon Man, the true story of the invention of Crayola crayons, written by Natasha Bebo, illustrated by Stephen Salerno, published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Once there was a man who saw color everywhere. He noticed the yellow-orange petals of the black-eyed Susans in his garden. He marveled at the rich scarlet-red tones of the cardinal's feathers. He admired the deep blue greens of the waves in the sea. Color made him really, really happy. But all day long at work, all he saw was black. Black dust, black tar, black smoke, black ink, black dye, black shoe polish. His company sold carbon black, a new kind of pigment or colored substance made from the soot of burning oil and natural gas. People used it in printing inks, electric street lamps, and stove and shoe polish. It also made rubber car tires last much longer. His name was Edwin Binney, and he was an inventor. He worked with his cousin, C. Harold Smith. Together, they were Binney and Smith. Harold was a great salesman. He loved to travel the world. Edwin was curious. He had a knack for listening and making what people needed. Edwin invented a new kind of inexpensive slate pencil that wrote very smoothly. It was gray. Children loved it. He invented a kind of chalk that wasn't dusty and didn't crumble. It was white. Teachers loved it. He invented a wax crayon that would write on wood and paper packaging. It was really, really black. People loved it. Paper was expensive in the 1800s, so children wrote with slate pencils or chalk on slates, small handheld blackboards. So when everyone, including Edwin's wife, Alice, told him that children needed better, cheaper crayons, he listened. They said, the crayons we have are big, dull, and clumsy. The lumps of colored clay only make fat, clunky lines. And the artist's crayons from Europe are far too expensive. They crumble and break easily. Some are even poisonous. Alice used to be a school teacher, so she knew what children needed she encouraged Edwin to invent the crayons. Edwin thought about his company's inventions. When you drew a picture with their gray slate pencil, it rubbed off at the drop of a hat. When you drew a picture with their white chalk, it smudged everywhere. If you drew a picture with Edwin's new, really black crayon, it was, well, really black. None of these inventions was any good for drawing in color. So Edwin listened and Edwin invented. In a small stone mill in Pennsylvania, in a top secret lab, Edwin's team experimented. How could they make better, stronger crayons? Melted paraffin wax? Perhaps. The first colored crayons invented in Europe were made from a mixture of charcoal and oil, so they broke easily. To make stronger crayons, Edwin tried using wax instead. Now for the crayon colors. Grinding, grinding, grinding up rocks and minerals into fine powders. Mixing, mixing. Slate for gray. Earth for yellow, red, and brown? Perhaps. Oh 
yes, and Loppies for blue. Pounding, sifting, and heating the colored powders. Would they be bright enough? Edwin's team kept on trying. They kept on experimenting. Ground up rocks and minerals made bright pigments for crayons. Red iron oxide for red, yellow iron oxide for yellow, varied shades of red iron oxide for brown, carbon black for black, zinc oxide for white, and imported ultramarine made from lapis lazuli for blue. They came home covered in color. They experimented some more and discovered a pinch of this pigment, a sploosh of that one, a little hotter, a little cooler, and voila, lots of different shades. Now there were greens, oranges, violets, and pinks too. Edwin came home covered in color. To make orange, green, and violet, chemists blended various pigments and clays. Some minerals changed color when heated. Plus, the length of time the mixtures were left to cool created different colors too. In a large tub at the mill, Edwin's team measured out the ingredients. Melted wax, clay to thicken, something for texture, colored powders, each in just the right amount every time to make a top secret formula. Slowly, carefully, stirring by hand, they poured the special formula into thin, crayon-shaped molds smaller than any other inventors, just the right size for children's hands. The mixture cooled and hardened. Edwin watched and Edwin waited. Children might eat or chew the crayons and get sick, so Edwin's team experimented to find new, safe, non-toxic colors and materials. Finally, one summer evening in June 1903, Edwin came home covered in color and announced that he had invented a new kind of colored crayon. But what should he call it? Alice had an idea. She said, let's mix the French word cray for stick of chalk and the word ola from the word oleaginous meaning oily, like the oily texture of the crayon wax, to invent a new word, Crayola, Crayola. Edwin listened. Benny and Smith shipped out the first Crayola crayon boxes, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. Eight colored crayons for only a nickel. Edwin waited. Would children like them? Children did. Now they could draw a tiny green caterpillar or the big blue sky. Their drawings wouldn't smudge and they wouldn't rub out. They were bright and could last a long, long time. By the 1900s, inventors had figured out how to make cheaper paper from wood pulp, so children could now draw on paper instead of just slate. Excitement over the new, colorful invention spread like wildfire. Admirers from far and wide flocked to marvel at Benny and Smith's inventions at the St. Louis World's Fair. The company's dustless chalk even won a gold medal. Proudly, Edwin and Harold showed it off 
especially on their new Crayola crayon boxes. Every day, Edwin brought colorful bouquets from his garden to inspire the Crayola team. They made crayons in even more different shades and later asked children to help name some of them. To celebrate their 90th anniversary, Crayola held a color naming competition. The six-year-old winner coined Tropical Rainforest. Other color names created by children included Robin's Egg Blue, Tickle Me Pink, and macaroni and cheese. At last, because of Edwin Binney, the man who saw color everywhere, who had a knack for listening and making what people needed, children all around the world could reach for just the right shade. Sun glow, wisteria, jungle green, Screamin' Green, Razzmatazz, Robin's Egg Blue, Wild Watermelon, Marvelous, Purple Mountain's Majesty, Cadet Blue, Lavender, Timberwolf, to draw anything. <laughs>